sadly today as a man with a hammer attacked a cop near Notre Dame, the cathedral in Paris, reportedly while screaming, this is for Syria. I was right at the door of the entrance, and we heard people rushing through the door, um, trying to get in, and the police behind them. And the police were just telling us, move to the front, move, move to the front. Of course, I don't speak French, I didn't know what they were saying, but I knew that they were serious. I didn't expect that this happened here. Like I was expecting that we went to the cathedral and everything was fine. Well, mercifully, the only casual today was the attacker himself, who was shot by an officer on the scene. President Trump says that these attacks show the need for his travel ban. But beside easy travel, what other factors have made Europe such a common terror target? Douglas Murray is the author of The Strange Death of Europe. He's thought a lot about this, and he joins us from London. Douglas, thanks a lot for coming on. One of the things you often hear Americans say, I have said, including last night, is that assimilation is the problem. These people are not assimilated. And yet you look around. And there are actually a number of groups in our society and yours who aren't assimilated. Hasidic Jews live apart. The Amish live apart. They pose no threat at all to the country they live in. They love the country. Why is this group different? Well, that's the key question, the one that people in Europe across my entire continent that I'm sitting in are thinking about and mulling about at the moment. The uh, political response is to tweak bits of anti-terrorism legislation. The British Prime Minister tonight has announced that she will even perhaps take Britain out of some of the human rights jurisdictions that we're under. And, and this is the sort of thing that all the politicians do across Europe. They, they, another terrorist attack occurs and they, they have tweaks effectively. Uh, uh, but all the time, the public are wondering about these very deep problems underlying it, which uh, include the one you just asked. W what is it about, about people from these Muslim communities across Europe that mean that, you know, on an average Saturday night in London, just down the road from where I am, three young men of Pakistani, Moroccan, Libyan origin would end up stabbing repeatedly at young people while shouting, this is for Allah. Uh, the, the, the truth is, is that it is obvious in one way. I mean, they are inspired by a version of Islam, a very violent and the worst possible version of Islam. But, but you know, our, our politicians are really stuck on this because they, through immigration rules they've had for decades, they brought this problem into Europe. And now they just seem to be totally unable to admit that or do any of the things that would, uh, would, would solve it because they gave us this problem. And against all evidence, they lie about the motive. So if you want to know why someone's doing something, yes. the first step is to ask him why you're doing this. I want to put up on the screen quotes from an Islamist magazine. These were printed directly after the Orlando nightclub attack here in the United States. And they say it really clearly. We hate you, first and foremost, because you are disbelievers. That's about as clear as it could possibly yes. be. Then they go on to point two, which is, we hate you because your secular liberal societies permit the very things Allah has prohibited while banning many of the things he has permitted. Yep. Your secular liberalism has led you to tolerate and even support gay rights, alcohol, drugs, fornication, gambling, and usury. They're widespread. You encourage people to mock those who denounce these filthy sins and vices. We could go on. But the, look, the point is, they're saying this is a religious war. Why don't we believe them? Well, because if, if, if it is true, then we've got all sorts of miseries ahead of us. I happen to think we do. But, uh, you know, in the meantime, we're in this transition f uh, phase in Europe. You know, we, I just came from a, a public debate I was doing in Westminster tonight. And, you know, the people are still, although things are moving, they are still in that sphere where it's, you know, they're, they're saying, you know, what has our foreign policy done that might have caused this? Or, you know, if a guy comes from Pakistan, as one of the attackers on Saturday night did, uh, 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 I don't think much of our country's Pakistani foreign policy uh, could be blamed on this. You know, people are sort of almost reaching out to find any reason other than the one uh, that's staring them in the face. Because, as I say, again, there's this issue. It came up in Manchester uh, uh, two weeks ago. Uh, uh, I mean, if, you know, uh, people try to say, you know, what's our foreign policy problems that have caused this? Again, you know, uh, nothing that means you'd blow up 22 people at an Ariana Grande concert in Manchester Arena on exactly. a Monday night. That's exactly uh, right. But the person who did that, by the way, you know, his parents came to this country from Libya. They got asylum and then their kid at the age of 22, blew up 22 people, one for each life, uh, a year of life that this country had given him. And those are the questions that our politicians are just totally incapable, for the time being, 
of addressing. And, and so, so we so have wait, this terrible on, I, and growing vacuum. I, I want to go back quickly to something you just said, because I thought it was provocative. You said, if the obvious is true, if what they say about their own motives turns out to be true, it spells a tough time ahead. Can you, what does that mean exactly? Well, let me give you a quick example. Uh, I mean, we all know that it's a tiny number of actual people from the Muslim communities who are going to carry out a terrorist right. attack. But uh, two polls last year, one in April last year, one in December, uh, by very reputable organizations, showed that uh, uh, in one poll, a half, and in the other, two-thirds of British Muslims said they would not go to the police if somebody they knew was involved in ISIS-like groups. Now, the rest of us in Britain would go at the drop of a hat if somebody we knew of any background or orientation was involved in extremism. But that's, that's what we're now facing. It's this question of, well, well, if they wouldn't even try to stop an attack like Saturday if they heard about them, where is the loyalty? What are, they, what are they doing? What are they thinking? The truth is that a lot of those people, they want to defend the faith and protect their faith as they see it more than they want to show, as it were, the loyalty that should be demanded by yes. a nation of its subjects. Douglas, and, that's, and, that, and as I say, we're still at the point where people don't want to demand that. No, because it's, it's too scary. I'm buying your book right after this. Douglas, thank you for joining us. That was really interesting.